<laughs> no, this is our home away from home. Oh, we still have our Airstream. Okay, well, leaving me again. She likes to leave me, go on vacation. Short trip. You know, I gotta stick around and rebuild Airstream. I'm going to work. She's going off to go play. Going to work and to glam. I didn't realize you were my dream. So you took me by surprise. Oh, yeah. camper event is so sold out so highly attended so popular that we don't have room for our tow vehicles and we have to unhook our trailer set up and then bring our tow vehicles and park in the medical plaza next door we made it we're at the girl camper event in Waxahachie it's actually called the wonderful women in Waxahachie and it's kind of like a girl camper slash Crossroads uh, Film and Music Festival that they're doing here in town. Um, lots of campers here. I've been told that the event is sold out. There's over um, 100 girl campers registered for this event. Um, Mom and I are together, so we're two of the 100. But there's lots of cute rigs, look, here in the background. See lots of campers. They're so cute. So, each camper was given two parking spaces one for their rig and one for all of their glamping items. Um, as you can see, we are taking up more than our fair share, um, but we they knew ahead of time that we would be coming in with Big Bertha and that she was a beast. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish setting up here. Uh, we are boondocking and um, we do have a generator. We stopped at a Loves and fueled up uh, for our generator tank. We have a 30 gallon generator tank and a 30 gallon fuel tank that we can then transfer into our generator. So uh, we should be good to go for the next few days. Okay, so back to the Airstream. All right, we've got the frame all taken care of. Now it's time to start putting things in the frame before we put the flooring on. One thing that we thought of whenever we decided to change things is we were going to actually change our floor plan. We went from a rear bathroom to a mid bunk. Well, whenever we, of course, pulled the floor off, I saw that I had 40 year old tanks. There's absolutely no way I was gonna drink out of 40 year old tanks. So we had to replace our tanks and because we're moving this, I had to get them custom made. There's a couple companies out there, you just give them the dimensions and they'll either custom make them for you or they'll have something pretty close. And so what we did is we went with something pretty close. It fits right in within my railing. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a 50 gallon freshwater tank, no, 75 gallon, a 75 gallon freshwater tank, two gray tanks and a black tank. I don't know why this isn't black. Or maybe this is the black tank. Maybe this is a black tank. Well, either way, we know that one of these is gonna be the black tank. But what we're doing is we're going with two gray tanks and a 75 gallon fresh tank. Oh, we wanna have the opportunity uh, to do a lot of boondocking. It's a smaller unit, it's only 30 foot. So we wanna see if we can get a little bit closer uh, to the mountains, to the beach and whatnot. 
And the problem that you have in boondocking is, is you always have to take care of your tanks. You gotta dump them. So we're gonna go ahead and plan ahead. We're gonna put in two gray tanks, a 75 gallon uh, freshwater tank. And then of course we have our 35 gallon um, black tank. The next step, of course, is for us to put in uh, the sensors. And I really did not want to go ahead and start drilling in holes uh, in my tanks. You know, now, yes, you can uh, put those in and they don't leak, but I found another way of doing this. Now, they've been out for a couple years, and when they first come out, you know, kind of skeptical. But we have these outside sensors. Now, this is set up by sea level. No, they're not a sponsor. But what you do is they send you these strips right here, these sending strips roughly about 13, 14 inches long, and you can custom cut these to the size of your tank. Let me show you. Right here, as you can see, as we get a little bit closer, you have these lines where you can make your cuts. Two of the benefits is, is I don't have to cut into my tank here, but secondly, most sending units, whenever you're actually checking your sensors and you have your monitors, they only give you three options. They give you one third, two thirds, and full. This breaks it down into uh, five percent increments, so I can say five percent full, ten percent full, fifteen percent full, twenty percent full, seventy percent full, seventy-five percent full, ninety-five. Oh, we're full. So the monitor I chose uh, with sea level is the one that gives me the battery, lets me turn on the water pump, gives me the fre uh, the fresh gray, my second gray, what they call galley, and my black. So I'm not gonna put these in today because I have to fabricate this holding straps that we're gonna put on these and I'm gonna make them heavy duty. But Stephanie is out at the girl camper meeting um, teaching on generators. So I wanna go out there, I wanna support her, see how things are going. And you can read the signs. We have one inside the rig. And we have the boondocking one inside the rig. Eight people, unless you just want to stand the whole time. Um, you know, it is big, but there's only limited space in there. 600 that you have available. Um, if you have a, like my microwave in my rig is 1500 watts. So if I'm running my microwave and my AC at the same time, something's not going to happen. We brought both so you can see what a 50 looks like compared to a 30. You can see that you have smaller um, lines with your 30. That's because there's less power. Something just to know, unless you have a 50 amp rig, you probably don't care about this. But a 50 amp rig actually gives you 12,000 watts because there are two hot wires, which means that both are 50 amp. And if both uh, give you that, what is it, 6,000? 6, 6,000 watts at both of them, then you have 12,000 watts available to you in your rig. That's one of the advantages of having a 50 unit. So we just ended an awesome day here at the Girl Camper College. The, uh, we had about 50 ladies come over and take some training classes that uh, Todd and I did, as well as Lady E, that's my mom, call her mama, and also we had two of our inspectors here, also ladies, and um, everybody just kind of pitched in and helped educate these folks who, a lot of them haven't even bought a camper yet, some of them are here just kind of checking things out to see about buying a camper. Um, others have a camper, but like I heard a lot of the ladies say that they don't use their propane in their rig because they're afraid of what might happen. So because they don't know uh, what to look for, they don't know how to troubleshoot, um, they don't know exactly how their propane systems work, um, they just don't use them. So today was about helping take some of the unknowns out of their experiences, um, giving them some input that would help them feel more comfortable in using their rigs. So we had four stations of training that we did today. Um, someone could hear about boondocking, learn about your 12 volt system, what runs on batteries versus what runs on your 110, you know, 120, what I call shore power. Um, if you're boondocking and then you don't have that electricity connection, what do you do? What are your options? Um, we specifically talked about generators. How do you use a generator? Um, you use it to recharge your batteries and 
How do you maintain it? And what are the pros and the cons of using a generator? We also had a session called My RV Kitchen, uh, which is something where we talk about the different appliances that you use in your rig. Um, your propane stove, your microwave, your refrigerator, the RV refrigerator. You know, it works on both electricity and propane. And what can you do to make things easier for you when you travel to keep things cool? We also had a station called Hooking Up and Dumping. And no, it's not a dating session. It was about connecting your unit to utilities. You're hooking up your power, you're hooking up your water, your sewer. And then when it's time to disconnect from those utilities, how do you dump your tanks? Um, how do you do that safely and sanitarily? Sanitarily, is that a word? This was really a great experience, you know. I always enjoy being able to come and do things like this, number one, because I like to camp. But number two, we get the chance to help educate people. We get to be able to give them some concrete facts that they can take back to their rig and better understand why things are happening the way they are in their unit. We're having people sit in our session and the light bulbs are going off. They're like, oh, that is why my refrigerator didn't work. That's why this didn't work. That's why I was dealing with this issue. Um, and that's, that's so great, being able to help people like that. So um, this is the third annual uh, event that they've done here in Waxahachie very first year they had 12 people 12 ladies come out and do a camp out next last year which was the second year they had 80 people wow talk about some growth this year they actually capped the attendee list to a hundred girl campers and they wouldn't take any more registrations because the park could only hold that many people so we're here at the Getzendanger Memorial City Park in Waxahachie Getzendanger, that's a fun word. Waxahachie is another fun word to say. Um, but it's a beautiful park. It's really actually a pretty big park. Uh, there's a nice uh, bike and walk trail that's here, several playgrounds, lots of shade, big uh, historic trees, and it's a perfect place to have an event like this. So have you ever RV'd in a city park before? Yes. Last year? No. Where? Last night. <laughs> I was talking to the camera anyway. <laughs> Had you ever RV'd in a city park before? <laughs> I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take your silence as a no. <laughs> <laughs>